one. Okay, we're live. Okay, welcome back, guys. This is episode two of Passport Talk with me, the Lightbringer TV, or the Lightbringer, to be specific, and my co-host. A steam co-host, you mean. The brother's oh, keep. Okay, okay, okay. i got to put some extras on it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so the Brothers Keeper. So today's show is going to be about the future of Western relationships and dating. And we're going to be doing a, trying to do a deep dive. We're going to try and stay on topic, stay focused, deep dive on the current situation going on in the West. Do you have any any thoughts, any early thoughts that you want to mention to BK to kind uh, of like kick us off? Early thoughts on the future of the Western, of Western relationships is right That's what I'm relationships and dating and dating. well yeah. my early my early projections like bring out are it, it's extremely bleak <laughs> extremely bleak so that's a that's like a a a two-word answer to, to kind of like summarize a perfect way to summarize i would say yeah. and i think that that basically uh kicks us off so yeah. we're gonna be playing a clip from a popular video and um, just uh, have a listen to this, because people that are older that might not be in touch with modern relationships and dating, people maybe in their forties and fifties, they could really kind of get some context of what's going on for people in their twenties and and thirties. So here we go. Last week, I delved here into recent data from the CDC suggesting major problems with regard to the mental health of our adolescents, surges in depression and suicidal ideation, especially true for our girls. This week, I found cause to worry about young men. This headline from The Hill, it caught my eye. Most young men are single, most young women are not. The story reported that as of 2022, Pew Research Center found 30% of US adults are neither married living with a partner, nor engaged in a committed relationship. Nearly half of all young adults are single. Now, look at these numbers. 34% of women, twice as many, a whopping 63% of men. What explains that? I pulled the Pew study and I read with interest. Turns out since 2019, the share of single men who say they're looking for dates or a relationship has declined from 61% to 50%. In 2018, 28% of men ages 18 to 30 reported they'd had no sex in the past year, compared with 18% of women of that age. The Hill Report said men in their 20s are more likely than women in their 20s to be romantically uninvolved, sexually dormant, friendless, and lonely. They stand at the vanguard of an epidemic of declining marriage, sexuality, and relationships that afflicts all of young America. Among the causes, among the factors, a reliance on social media and online porn. Okay, so you 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 got that little intro from from the OG. Okay, the stat the stat OG, the stat man, the stat man. So very interesting, extremely interesting. I want to hear from you, BK. Yeah. What what do you think? We all know the stats, yeah. You saw, did you see the, the stat for black people as well? It was 47%. Yeah. It, so yeah. it was a good, what, 20% higher than the rest of them. In fact, I'll probably go back to that at some point. Yeah, just yeah, to we recap. Should. We should. That, 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 what do you think? What do you think to that? Well, first of all, all jokes aside, it's, it's alarming, actually. And um, it's alarming because he touched upon it, but there is a statistical link between... Uh, loneliness um, and depression and suicide. No one can overlook that at this point. We've seen an alarming amount of uh, male suicide in recent years. So that part, let's first mm -hmm. and foremost say, is not a joke. It's a very serious issue that needs addressing. Mm -hmm. And when you say Lightbringer, it's 47% in the black community. That's even more alarming because <laughs> we are black, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we care about our community um, despite... You know, some of the jokes we've made in our first stream and ones we'll probably continue to make. We mm -hmm. are men who do care about uh, people that look like us in our community. So that is extremely alarming for the future. Um, so that's my first thought when I see statistics like that. But I'm not surprised. And I'm mm -hmm. sure you're not either. These are things we're both 
very well aware of. It's just sad because we'll probably get into the reasons why this is the case. But yeah, the first the first thought for me is it's alarming. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of where I want to go with it. I mean, the reasons... I've been conversing about the reasons for a long time, and I want to shed some light on it. Yeah, I want to give my opinion. So in the black community, yeah, the black male community, black female community, that's what we're really focusing on, from primarily on this page. And I would have it said, in the black community, there is no room for men that are outside of the stereotype of being an alpha male. So black women, they have no tolerance for that. If you're not six, if you're not six foot, and by the way, we're not, you know, we're, we're tall guys, we're built guys. You know what I mean? We, 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 we tick some of the boxes for these women, but if you're not alpha male, if you're not tall, if you're not um, projecting a certain status, you're not getting looking. So mm-hmm. it's basically, other races of people, white people, white guys, you can be a beta male, you can still get yourself a little girlfriend. If you're a black guy, you cannot be five foot four for the most part. And if you are, you better have charisma out of the world, out yeah. of this world charisma. You can't be there just, you know what I mean? So we have higher, in a way, higher hurdles to overcome to actually appease the black, the female. Uh, compared to other races, then you got to look at the situation and say, well, a lot of women are actually getting pregnant and sleeping with maybe 10 to 15% of guys. Mm. That's kind of like the ratio. It's almost like 60, 70% women are really sleeping with 10, 15% of the guys. And that's across many racial lines, but very much so in the black community because of said reasons. Because of said reasons. Um, where else would I want to add to that? Where else would you add to that reason yeah. why did, yeah. that caused this? Yeah, you made a good point. I think, I think when you think about it from the perspective of not allowing for the versatility in the community, that that is a, a very interesting point that probably wouldn't even get covered in in the stat man over there's um, mm-hmm. fiction because obviously he's not in the black community and he's not as well versed as obviously someone like yourself or me. But you spoke to it. I think. There's a there's a limit on 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 type, right? You you mentioned that, and I think that that often gets overlooked because you're either expected to meet that standard or just miss out altogether. And when you miss out altogether, now you're going to be part of the statistics. <laughs> so mm-hmm. our community does have an issue with allowing for versatility of of people, of personality, of type, of um, you know build height, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, career personality and that that's something i don't know how to remedy that or if there is a remedy for that but it's certainly an issue because it speaks to the fact that we don't see ourselves as a a diverse enough group of people we have to be one profile we have to be one type or we're not considered worthy essentially i think it's innate i actually think in black ancestry and history the Whatever happened over time made it so that black women are predisposed to go for very strong males. Yeah. And there is not obviously enough maybe strong males in the community in, in that prototype. They don't there's not enough of those type of guys. So they don't give, like as you said eloquently, the versatility isn't looked at. No. It's like, no, we want that. So it's they desirable. would rather Well, it's not desirable. And the, the, the question is maybe that we should move on to is why is it not desirable? Like you talked about it, it prehistorically, right? That's a good way of looking at it. But civilizations, groups, everybody evolves. Everything evolves. It was tribal. Time. It was tribal. It was tribal. But At one time. Don't, don't, we, don't we evolve? I know, I know we're probably having a bit of a philosophical conversation here, but don't you evolve as a person, as a, as a race, as a group of people? If, think- if that's the only desirable group, then, like I said earlier, you're going to freeze out a certain amount of the market, and there is not enough of that demographic you mentioned to go around. Not for all the black women, anyway. Yeah, and we're actually attacking it initially from one perspective. So we're attacking it from the assumption that women are in complete control of relationships. On the other side, you know, one would argue men are actually in more control of relationships. That's a common... uh, theme that's pushed out there and to say to that basically if 
This is the elephant in the room. 70 to 80% of black women are overweight. And of that number, 80% of that number is obese. So effectively, yeah. most black women are obese. Right. If you look at the stats, yeah. And that also plays into the numbers because the thing is, average men, yeah, there's mm -hmm. millions and millions of average men. Most people are average. They work re regular jobs. Yeah. They appear average. They're of average height, average status. They're of no status. There's no social media following behind them. Those guys, they, they are not going to say to themselves, for the most part, okay, I'm going to just accept an overweight woman that's 187 pounds mm. at five foot four or five foot five. They're yeah. not going to accept that. And that plays into the numbers because effectively those men have a choice. Okay, date this 187 pound woman who has a sassy attitude that gives, you know, a bit of a headache and or be solo. And there is a section of men that will just say, you know what? I'd rather be solo because black people, I think they call them black people. I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe that's the, the, the terminology. I think that's actually the term for them. I think they've chosen, it, it might be another Reddit, uh, you know, generated term. I think they've chosen to just um, cut themselves off from society and women as a whole. Yeah. There's other issues behind that, but one of the main ones is, well, we're not going to get chosen by the ones we want. So we may as well just completely abstain. Crazy. Yeah. I guess that's an extreme uh, way of looking at it. Um, yeah, I reckon some people just in life that are not even familiar with the term choose to opt out, but they're not even familiar with the space, they're not even familiar with the YouTube yeah. space, this manosphere content. They just think, oh, well, I'm etched out and I'm not going to deal with these 187 pound wells. Let me just, um, you know, what I mean, do the solo thing. Mm. You know I mean, and then some guys go into the travel. So some of the solo guys, they then trick, they then branch out into different things. Some will branch out into being some type of extreme black pill. I don't know if it's extreme, but just an example. Some people will go into the passport game. Some people will become hermits. Some people, do you know what I mean? And some will date other races of women. That's worth mentioning as well, because obviously yeah. you can't Big get black. the one you yeah. want from the, from the, if you, let's say you're a race loyal person, right? You only want to date black women. By and large, that's what you've been exposed to that's what you're most attracted to. Like you said, if, if, if you can't find your match, so to speak, you are going to look uh, outside of the race. That's definitely another option. Yeah. Okay, let's let's see what where this guy goes with it now. So we've done a little brief. Hold up. But also, more young women are hooking up with each other or dating and marrying slightly older men, and heterosexual women are getting more choosy. Other troubling statistics about men come from a 2021 study from the Survey Center for American Life. They found the share of men who have six or more close friends, which in 1990 was 55%, by 2021 had shrunk by half. Meanwhile, those with literally zero close friends, which stood at 3% in 1990, has zoomed to 15%. An expert quoted by The Hill said this disconnect can have catastrophic consequences for young men. Quote, in the worst case scenario, the young American man's social disconnect can have tragic consequences. Young men commit suicide at four times the rate of young women. Younger women are largely responsible for rising rates of mass shootings, a trend that some researchers link to their growing social isolation. Well, those words reminded me of a conversation that I had over a year ago right here on CNN with NYU professor Scott Galloway. But the issue is when you have a group of men, the lower half of attractiveness of men and online dating, which has doubled now, it's about half of relationships and the top 20 percent of men in terms of attractiveness get about 60 percent of the interest. You end up with a group of men that are more prone to conspiracy theory, more prone to misogynistic content more prone to believe, not believe in climate change. So these, this is the American story. If it's written with a pen whose ink is failing young men, does, does not end well. This is an existential crisis, failing young men. Yo, so you hear that bit? Yeah, I did. And again, he, he touched upon it um, because I, I mentioned it as well, but yeah, th those are the problems it leads to. This is why it, it, it can no longer be just a, uh, 
I, don't, I won't say it was ever a laughing matter, but you, we're men, so we understand the unique struggles of men, you know, internally, externally. So, yeah, suicide, mass shootings, uh, aggression. Self, self, self deletion. Self deletion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, self deletion, self deletion, because yeah. it's a serious matter. Mental health, depression, alcohol, uh, misogyny, porn, you name it, you know. Um, mm. Like when you know my background's in coaching, so I've dealt with guys who have gone through these, these types of issues as well. So it's not foreign to me either. But um, it does lead to that. You know, disconnect, isolation is not good for anyone. Um, mm -hmm. Least of all a man. People can say what they want. I'm not here to tell anyone, uh, you know, about their, what their religious beliefs are or, you know, hey, this is how you should run your household. You should do this. You should do that. A woman should do this. I have my own thoughts and beliefs and we can get into that later. But what I will tell you is biologically, men are built to have women with them. People can argue with themselves on that one. That's a mm -hmm. biological like desire and inherent need and vice versa. So when you don't have that, no matter how much money you've got or whatever else is going on in your life, some key component right there is missing and it will show itself up, you know, like a, like a wound at some point. And if it's not addressed or treated like a wound, it will manifest. And well, some of those issues that he mentioned will happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want to get into as well is obviously we've spoke about how the last 10 to 15 years with the advent of social media, particularly Instagram, particularly Tinder, particularly any, these like super networked dating apps. Um, they've changed obviously the face of dating, relationships and dating. Women now effectively have way more choice to, to date. And the supply of men is endless for them. Whereas 15 years ago, it was not an endless supply of men. It just, they just physically, you could not, uh, encounter that many men 15 years yeah. ago so that being said if the supply of men is huge they can now effectively as we mentioned cherry pick the top guys they can they've now got an army of attention givers basically through social media and what it kind of boils down to is effectively it's almost becoming women are becoming more for want of a better word premium like premiumized or monetized from mm. that's a better expression women now effectively have the leverage to monetize themselves and i want to lean into how does monetize relationships and monetize sort of dating how does that play into current times in in, in particularly within like the black community but from in the dating community as a whole great question i think the way I see it is the more monetized dating gets um, and the more, like you mentioned, women have that choice to sort of cherry pick, the more the demand and the expectation increases on the man than what it's ever been. You know, mm -hmm. we're not all strangers to the idea of hypergamy and traditional relationships, a man being a protector, a provider, having to have some kind of financial or other resource to entice a woman. But it's, it's definitely that that has increased significantly because of social media so the demands are higher even the men that you mentioned that would be getting cherry picked the demand is higher on them to have said resources to 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 even entice let alone maintain these women so if you're not one of these said men it's almost like what do i do you know what i mean what, what do i do if i don't have the the required resources so how it plays out is a man becomes more and more utilized. He was already a utility, right? But he didn't have such a negative connotation. Now it almost does. It has like an icky. You can see there's men, we talked about it, black pill or whatever, men who, who want to just, let's be real, completely reject any kind of male responsibility, not just for a woman, but for themselves. Why bother working out? Why take care of myself? Why? There's no reward in it. No one's going to, you know what I'm saying? This is what the mentality creates. You know, and you see it in guys. Well, who cares? I don't even care. I'll just take my job and I'll eat junk food and live by myself. It's created all this kind of, you know, like lack of self-worth in men. And it, it's horrible to see because that is quite depressing to see that in other people. Like you do it for yourself. You try to develop yourself for yourself. But, you know, one of the rewards, right, whether you've mm -hmm. got fear or not, is typically for becoming a productive man. You are rewarded with a woman, you know, and mm -hmm. if that's not there. It is going to cause a man to say, well, why, why bother? Why even bother? Why work hard? Why improve myself? Why climb the ladder? Why get in shape? Why make money? Why do anything if I'm just destined to be alone? So yeah. that monetization thing is just pushing the, 
the, um, the divide that we can already see between men and women even wider. Yeah, that's well said. Very well said. So in terms of, so I think at this point, we've very clearly diagnosed the, the shift that's happened with social media, the shift that towards more women having so much leverage in the West that they can effectively monetize. But there is a solution. There is a, there is a solution and we're fully aware of this. And our channel, as we know, you know, we are trying to expand and kind of um, galvanize men to really look beyond the shores that they actually live on. So, you know me, I'm a big advocate for South America. For some people, it might be Africa. Some people might be Asia. Like how, just just uh, briefly, how would you, what would you say to that? Do you think this is the only solution or do you think there is a way to kind of get um, dating in the, in, in the UK and the US back to where it was? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it salvageable in the West? And where, what, what's the option? <sighs> I don't, it, it takes a smarter person than me to, to answer if it's salvageable. I don't want to say all hope is lost. I would like to think though, being a realistic, you know, individual and a man of my own unique situation and maybe yours, you can speak for yourself. I look at my age, I look mm -hmm. at the current trend and I have to put my thinking cap on and be logical and say, if I was a man between my twenties and myself and Lightbringer, we're in our thirties, forties or even fifties, I would suggest the best solution is owning a passport. I look at my peers. I look at the men I respect in this space as well. And the advice they're giving, which resonates with me, they tend to be around my age group and they're advocates of this. I've also tried this lifestyle of dating abroad, using my passport, so to speak, right? Get your passport. And it works for me. So I would advise that. Is it salvageable? I don't know. But do you have time? This is something I heard from... Um, Love crossing, but I think we lost you there for a second, Lightbringer. Your video. Yeah, I'll come. I'll come at, uh, my camera. Okay. It times out for some reason. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can still hear you. Oh, you're back in. So yeah, as I was saying, I, I some something I heard Love Crossing Borders say, and I want to give him the credit for this. He's like, you don't have time to convince a woman to turn the ship around and to mm. get on the program or to turn the tide of how third yeah. wave feminism has affected the dating marketplace or the monetization, as you mentioned. These are all issues that potentially could be solved but how much time do you have to actually sit down with let's say the woman you actually want to be with who might not actually be on the same program as you and convince her you don't necessarily know how much time you've got on earth let's be honest so yeah. i would just say like he said well he says stop arguing start packing you could say that just, how about you just start packing start packing start some trips start actually exploring the idea if you're disgruntled if you're not happy if you're not being serviced if you're not getting a look in Start exploring the idea because at the very least, when you take action and you book that flight and you do get your passport, you're not waiting for something else to change. You've taken action on a situation. And I like to think Lightbringer and myself, we are action takers. Hence why we believe in this movement because we're not waiting for things to turn around for the government or the data marketplace. Oh, there's an app that lets men go for, I don't care. I don't yeah. care. I'm not <laughs> waiting for all of that. They can build, they, they will do that eventually because they'll see well, they'll react, right? There'll be a reaction to how many men are going abroad. But I'm like, you can't stop this wave. And I'm not yeah. going to wait. I'd rather take my passport, my money, vote with my dollars, as 1MT says, and I'll take action on my life. And the choice is there if, if a man wants to, to, to take it. But I would say, look at, look at every option where what gives you the most control and what gives you the best advantage. And I do think the passport movement gives you that because you're not waiting for something to come to you. You're not waiting for something to change. You're saying, you know what? Let me get out there. Let me try and let me see for myself. Yeah. And I always say, what kind of underpins men's options? Because it's a market. At, at its base point, it's a market. And yes. this is why I, I'm a business, my best. I have a business background. I've, yeah. I've run million pound companies. Yeah. yeah. People, don't, people don't really understand uh, my background, what I've done. One day there'll be a show, I'll probably be doing it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And if the market is defined by the supply of sli slim, or as Kevin used to say, fit. Fit feminine. Fit feminine, feminine, feminine yeah. friendly women. That, that The market conditions are controlled by the supply of that. Yeah. If that is always limited, you will never have the leverage as a man in the West 
to um to be even above average slightly above average and come on even a slim woman because you um you, you, your, your market doesn't dictate the market doesn't bear that you right. sl slimness a slim fit feminine attractive woman is it's almost now become a luxury for rich men absolutely it's almost that's a luxury scary. for rich men it's 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 it, 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 it's so different from I mean, when you see videos in the seventies and eighties of you know uh, documentaries, he had kids. kids. He was still yeah. slim. Yeah. So now you've got a culture, and England's not far behind. Yeah. Let's keep it real. We don't have super size women like that. There is yeah. some, but not to the same extent. But we do have a lot of chubby women that are a bit fluffier, and it, it, the, the result is the same. Yeah. As far as I'm as far as I'm concerned, as far as, as far as LB is concerned, if you are fluffy, you may as well be obese because you are out of the game. Yeah. You are out of you are out of the game for a high value man. You're out of the game for me. Yeah. You're out of the I can't speak for others, but you're out of the game for a lot of of men, the majority of men. You but know? yet what's being pushed on the majority of men? How you mean? What what is the market? The market isn't bearing what you said, but what is generally out there? What what options are available? What's being pushed through apps, yes. through social media, through marketing? Chubby everyday women. That's what you said. The everyday woman is chubby now. So that that sixties housewife who was in shape but had kids was still slim. That isn't an image you even see. The marketing, yeah. the marketing, the apps, so, social media, the algorithm doesn't even display that. Like you said, uh, a slim in shape fit feminine friendly woman is only at least that's, that's what the market's telling us is only reserved for the top few percent of men any yeah. dreams or desires or lust you had for that woman you now know as an everyday man you're you priced out. exactly you're priced out you have to reach this station to attain that that isn't going to be an attainable woman on a regular dating app that's crazy yeah and especially as well to add to that you've got two sets of women you've got the the overweight women who are completely out of the game for me never will happen. But then also you've got women. And this is a thing. This is my complaint of the West. Yeah. Is I'm black women as well. You've got, you'll have women that might be somewhat slim, but they'll be 30, mm. 31, 32, mm. 33, 34, 35. Mm. So no, 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 no guys. Like mm. as it would, as it went in the old day in Islam, Half the age plus seven, half the yeah. age plus seven. That's the principle. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and um, we're not being ageist here, but that's a great point. We should really. I am quickly. Well, you you could be that way, like bring up. I'm being ageist. Like bring up. No, because this is what's I interesting. For myself. Why? Why? Why is that an issue? Because if you look at again biologically, before anyone gets in their feelings when they watch this, biologically, those are more difficult childbearing years. There is a, re and there's a great video on this, right? I know you've seen it, Lightbringer. There is a reason why the creator stops women from having children at a certain age. Women do have children in their late 30s and even in 40s. That is possible. But those become risky pregnancies if you're trying to have a family. And as men, if you are logical, you would want that woman you just described before she had turned 30. Because now you've got some time there to build, to establish yourself, to get your finances right before you maybe choose to have a family. If she's 30... 31, 32, and I've had experience dating women of these ages, it becomes a pressure situation for both people. And obviously that can get dangerous too, as I just mentioned biologically. So to each his own, date what you like. Age might not be a thing for you. You might be okay with that, but you do have to think about things like that if you do intend to like sire children. So now it's a case of, okay, she's getting older, but it's now becoming difficult to get pregnant if you want to have a family. Now what are you going to do? So you know, like you said, if the market's only showing you the, the, the profile of woman you want, but her, her age doesn't fit into that profile, well, then that's an incongruence, isn't it? Yeah. And, it, and this is all relevant to why the rate, as the video says, the rate of black relationships or what was black men uh, and black women is so high mm. because we are not getting on the same page no. at all. So we're, out, the, we're out of sync. Out I will see it. Completely out of alignment with values, with, yep. with dating preferences, how we want to run our, our our lives and our households. It's crazy because, you know, you don't even, let's be real, we could probably say this, right? <laughs> I 
um, we don't even really see ourselves as a reflection of each other anymore. We're like completely like... Hmm? Yeah, because... Like, our, like, like, we're like well, You're a different group to us entirely is how I see it now. Yeah, because men, black men are largely conservative and right. black women are largely liberal. Very liberal. They're largely new wave. Yeah. They're pro, you know, alphabet. So, oh, you gosh. know what I mean? So, so for me... It's it's you are right. We we're, we're not a reflection of a. In terms of weight, they look at weight as as something to almost be celebrated. Oh, right. you're you're big, you're healthy, blah blah blah. Um, you know, don't let anybody say anything about. No 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 no. Yeah, if if I have a daughter, right, like she, in order to for her to to have a best shot at life and for her to have a best chance at pairing mm -hmm. with a with a decent man. She needs to watch her weight and what she consumes. And you're going to tell her that, right? Because yeah. as a man, as a black man, we hold each other, our friends, our cousins, everyone around us accountable to higher standards. Yeah. We don't mince our words. And we were just brought up that way. I mean, those of us who had the real men around us, you know, uncles and fathers and that, that's what you do. But you're right. If you're living in a, a household with a liberal woman, right, of the same race, right, black women we're speaking about here, then you're gonna you're gonna get some mixed up children and a mixed up family because you're gonna try and lead in a conservative way, and then she's gonna start brainwashing your family with all these foolish liberal ideologies that just don't work. Yeah, it don't work. It don't. You know what I mean? So I'm clear on what I'm doing. I've got my boundaries, and I'm clear on what I'm trying to do. So I fit completely with the passport bro movement, traveling and dating, and I love black women. So exactly. before anyone comments and says, "Oh, you just," You don't. You just want a white woman, or you just want a Latin woman, or you want to. You want to go to Southeast Asia and find yourself a little docile Asian woman. No, 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 no. I love black women. I love women that are mixed race, black, all shades of. As a, uh, as my man uh, Umar Johnson would say, all <laughs> cocoa yeah. butter brown, vanilla waffle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I like yeah, all the yeah, yeah. That's the, black women are beautiful, but it's the yeah, culture. Definitely. It's the culture, you know. It's the culture. The culture. The culture is the issue, not. Yeah, not black women per se. It's it's a yeah. cultural issue. But interesting enough, even though it's a cultural issue, countries you just mentioned, interestingly, or well, we can segue into that, produce black women. I mean, you could look at it however you want. They speak Spanish. They speak Portuguese. They speak an indigenous, uh, you know, original people language. They are still black. So if the desire yeah. is on black women, brothers, get your passports because the world is full of black women in um, many of these other countries. And black women. Unfortunately, in America and the UK, a lot of them are are slightly they they're ignorant to the fact. And men, black men are ignorant. They're ignorant to the fact that there's so much black people in these countries. Yeah. So they they almost assume that any kind of dis discussion that's somewhat considered to be anti-black means you're pro dating outside of your race. They yeah. don't even fathom the thought. That no 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 no, and that's what that's effectively what my channel really wants to push, and yeah. really why I'm trying to take it. I'm trying to let black men know the the 20 million black men that are in America, the one million or so black men that are in the UK, and the black men that are throughout Europe. Not quite sure how many. These guys need to know that they have been misinformed, mis um, marketed, and been sold a dream of. Of, of you know, like for example, the back in the day, you'd watch the hip hop videos, have the black women, beautiful black women. That's what brothers want. Yeah, black, yeah. most black men want to date a black woman, but what they're getting now is a different type of black woman. Yeah, I agree. A, you know what I mean? So, you know, what I mean, they need to be not to, to be to be made aware. I um, can chime in on that actually because you made a great point. Um, if if, if I, you and I spoke about this off camera because I I have dated and I'm not ashamed of it. I have dated outside my race, but I've obviously dated inside my race. What you just said, if that option and I'd have known maybe like 10 years ago was available to me when I was still, you know, at my peak desire for black women, right? Before I maybe thought about swirling or trying other races, I would have gone abroad and I'd have gone to these countries and said, oh, hang on, let me try dating a black woman that's not from the same uh, toxic culture that I'm from. Because I didn't know it was an option. Yeah, I sure I knew there were black girls in Brazil, Africa, the Caribbean, Latin America, but... Did I think I would ever like maybe go to these places and actually ever have a shot with them? Probably not. And so I'm not saying that would stem the flow of interracial relationships. It might, it sure might. But for me, I think it could have done because for sure there was a period there where I was like, man, I do like black women, but there's a cultural like 
issue here. There's some sort of, mm -hmm. you know, like we said, uh, misalignment here. And it's causing me to not look at them in the same light. But if I'd have seen or been exposed to a woman who still had a level of melanin, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but wasn't from the same city, country or environment as me, that could have turned my head very quickly. And that's the problem. You mentioned a great point. You said when you was at the peak, I don't know if it was a throwaway comment, but when you was at the peak, desirability for black females was 10 years ago. Right. When you was 25, yeah. Sure. Like that, that in itself is a problem because right. black okay. women, they are, black culture is so consumed with youth and, and just being just like these young rappers and uh, choosing black men with dreads, mm. uh, with gold tipped tarantula dreads. And like, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make um, the structure, it doesn't make the, the, the columns for building good black families because oh. black, black women in America and black women in the UK do not embrace age gap dating. Right. Wait, wait. A, sorry? No, no, carry on. You, you're making a yeah. great point. As a as a thirty seven, I'm a thirty seven. I'm gonna just lay it out there. As a thirty seven, if I walk up to a twenty five year old woman in the UK, she will, um, by and large, deem me to be out of her age range. She right. probably pop out at about thirty three. There will be some exceptions, but to she, her probably default range will probably be about like thirty two. Right. So like maybe a seven year, and that we pushing it. Like that guy would have to then kind of like come in. So that in itself is a problem to me. I mean, I'm obviously biased. I would say that, you know, being that age, I would say that I still deal with women that are younger than me. Yeah, I know how to, 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 to I know how to, 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 to shake a move mm. in the UK. But um, that in itself is a problem because it doesn't, men need time to obviously build and establish themselves. And it leads to a whole, whole load of issues like where we're not really when we're, we're underemployed, we're not, we're not, um, we don't have the maturity to lead forth a family because yeah. a 23 year old wants a 25 year old. But you just made a great point at 23. I definitely wasn't ready to lead no family. I wasn't ready to lead myself. I have much more knowledge of self now at 35. So I, I shouldn't be priced out for my age. If anything, we should be revered for having a certain amount of wisdom, having made a certain amount of decisions, money, well-traveled life experience. And we all hear these expressions and everyone hears them. Women and men are mature at a different age. Well, if that's true, like you just said, age gap relationships shouldn't be as frowned upon, but they always have been to my recent memory. And so the point you're making is true. Um, a certain amount of men are kind of just eased out of the market and told not to even bother looking in the direction of, a, let's say, a younger woman by a mm -hmm. even a few years. So that's crazy to me. And I think that's another reason why going abroad makes sense because age gap relationships are not considered taboo when you go abroad, but in the conceptual West, they are. So it's a big, big issue for the black community. And also goes back to what you said about why we're not getting along. But the black community is in disarray. Let's just keep it all the way real. And not just in America, definitely here in the UK and possibly yeah. other parts of the conceptual West. And that's one of the reasons. If a man my age or your age is now ready to start a family, with a young woman and he's bringing a lot of value to the table, but she's not considering him, then that's the reason why some of those statistics, the men and the women are single. Yeah. She can't find a man, but she doesn't want to date this man because she doesn't think he's worthy. But the man she does think is worthy is probably not going to show up the right way, take care of the household. If he does get her pregnant, is he really going to be, do you know what I mean, ready for that? Is he going to have the resources, the, the mindset, the, the leadership skills necessary to run a family? And if it doesn't work out, what happens statistically? Now that's a broken home, single mother, another one, chalk it up. This is how it all gets done. Yeah. And we see it time and time again. You see what I'm saying? Then she go back into the marketplace. Now she's a little bit wiser, made the mistake with the first man. Now she's ready for you, but you don't want to date her because now you don't want to be dating a single mother. It's another yeah. statistic. You see what I'm saying? But now you're still single. So this, this is how it happens. Yeah. Because people, like I said, the market is broken because you can't get people on the same page. You can't get people to align at the time they need to align because they're not, they're not, they've either not developed the level of maturity to understand the situation, or it's just a case of entitlement and selfishness. No, I just want what I want. And that's yeah, that. That's it. No, no willing to compromise, spoil. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a mess. And the amount of just cause people think, okay, UK tea and crumpets, we all know <laughs> the queen. Yeah. The amount of black women in the UK, yeah, that will be, 
let's say, 23, 22. And they will go and have a child by a hood. Mm. Like, when I say, like, a rapper that nobody knows. Nobody yeah. knows this rapper. Yeah. He's an MC. He's a rapper. Grime. You know, UK, we do this grime yeah. thing. He does drill. Yeah. And she'll go and have kids by this guy. And yeah. then when it doesn't work out, it's like, well, was you surprised? Yeah. Decisions yeah. and choices. Her youth and beauty. And she's basically throwing it away, unfortunately. Yeah. Because like I just mentioned, if we want to be very real and transparent here, she is not going to get looked upon favorably once. Because also it's like the caliber of the man she was with with the child. A guy's being smart. He's saying, well, I don't want to have no smoke or no problems with this guy. I'm not bringing that into my life. That's baggage, essentially. Right? That's the best way I can phrase it. So like you said, it's like you've wasted the, 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 a, a good period where you could have been also developing yourself as a woman, learning more about yourself and what type of value you're going to bring to a man's life if he was raised the right way. How to, do you know what I mean, maintain, take care of yourself, take care of a man. How will you take care of children? Not being out there, busting it down for some guy who's not really worthy of you. So this is a big problem. And I, I think, like, even if you take away that, you know, that, that loose example you used, just in general, like Bringer, if you mention, and we've, we've spoken about our ages, right? I'm 35, you're 37 respectively. If you pitched me a 22 year old, 23 year old black woman in England right now, I, I would already be on, on alert. I'd be like, mm, no, I don't know about that one. Cause my vision of a 22, 23 year old black woman, no offense in the UK is not a good one. Mm. I, I just maturity wise, I'm just like, no, she wouldn't be ready. Even if she was interested in a man my age, I'm like, no, I, I, doubt, I doubt that would work very much. Yeah, there, there is a there is a maturity shift, and to compare to that woman out in like Latin America, those women are a lot more mature. I it's agree. Extremely noticeable. Latin America, everywhere, every all those countries mentioned, they are way it's way different. The immaturity in the West is ridiculous. Yeah. To think that, um, I mean, some women you'd think that all they do is twerk and go to restaurants. Right. That's like right. their hobbies. Like, okay, that's all. That's all you do. It's just and go on TikTok and. Instagram, it's just there is a level, and the West affords that because men in the West have built the West up to be so proficient and so yeah. successful and resourceful that women now can sit in the comfort of passing time by doing yeah. beer, basically. Yeah, yeah whatever then, happened to you, sorry, carry on. Go ahead. No, no. Well, I was gonna say, whatever happened to you, we're probably gonna sound our age here, but whatever happened to the women that were developing skills? going to classes with their friends, not just going to like turn up. Do you know what I mean? Oh, let's go learn a, a craft or something together as friends. Do you know what I mean? Let's do book club and all this. This stuff is gone. It, it's dying out. I mean, it's there, but again, no offense. You find this women of a certain age doing it. And it's like, yeah, but you're, you're now past your best when you're trying to develop these skills. And again, they're strategically trying to develop those skills to entice a man to yeah. make themselves worthy. It was like, but a man don't want a woman who's starting to develop herself in her 30s and her 40s. We wanted you developing those skills when you're in your 20s so that yeah. I now know you would make a suitable partner for me. There we go. I, I just want to make it clear, put it on the record. I will not date a woman who's above 28. Well, I, I just want to make that clear and on the record. <laughs> and that is, that's just how it is because I don't need to. That's that's right. the reason. I don't need to. I have, I have a passport. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have, I have. You see those two flags down by, the, by my name, Lightbringer TV. Uh, there you go. You those two flags. Those two flags. What? What's Brazil population is like? What? Two hundred and ten million. Yeah. The Dominican Republic, Ireland, eleven million, ten, eleven million. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and, then, and I have a bunch of other flags in my right. pocket too. <laughs> options. So, no, that's the options. point. I've got options. options. There's no. I don't have a issue of. So, for, to some people, the show sometimes when I talk, it might come across. Uh, cynical, or it might come across like I'm coming from a real complaint and say, I'm just trying to create conversation and dialogue. Yeah. At the end of the day, I have options, yeah, right. and I'm trying to encourage brothers. I don't want brothers to get to, to maybe someone that's watching it might be 24, 25 from the UK or the US, and he it can't, he's new to the space, he doesn't understand how to maneuver. Right, it was a lot easier 15 years ago when we were in our early 20s yeah. to literally walk up to an attractive girl and put the game down and yeah you would have some traction with that situation because yeah. she didn't have the leverage of social media to go yeah. against your attempts yeah. Yeah. to try and uh, pursue the chick. Great so Great it's point. unfortunate that brothers now are in timing-wise haven't got that. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you, 
people, I'm hoping people can relate because I'm not an old, I'm not an old guy. None of us are, are old. Like maybe to some people we look like we're uncles, but we're trying to tell you, look, you need to adapt your strategy because 2012 was a pivotal year and it changed and it created huge conversation. Well, I would say the conversation has been the last two years, but 2012 was the the kind of like the the what's the the landing point that was like the the explosion of all this content being able to be become a talking point because the game shifted. Yeah. So anyway, let's get back to this video. Let's see what else he has to say. As always, Professor Galloway was prescient. Back with me now is Scott Galloway. He's a professor of marketing at NYU Stern School of Business. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's the host of the Professor G podcast and author of multiple best-selling books, most recently, Adrift, America in 100 Charts. Scott, thanks for returning. Hasn't the advantage always been to those with the looks and or the money? What's changed? Uh, first off, Michael, I just want to say thank you for uh, raising this issue a year ago when a lot of media um, companies were afraid to talk about this for fear of it being pro-men with somehow being anti-women. Look, this is returning to the natural order of things. For the majority of history, a small percentage of men have had the majority of the mating opportunities. But in America, we decided to make a huge investment in what would probably be the greatest innovation in history, and that is in the middle class. From 1945 to 1947, 7 million men returned from war were discharged from the service, and we decided to give them the GI Bill, uh, subsidized mortgages. Uh, we saw education rates come from 5 to 45 percent. They were valued, and we had such a strong a manufacturing base that you had massive uh, marriage and household formation. And some men were seen as more economically and emotionally viable. And you've seen the reverse happen with the offshoring of much of our manufacturing base, with a society that quite frankly doesn't value young men. When we talk about problems with people of color or women, we see it as a systemic societal problem. When we see problems or the stats that you just mentioned, we see it as accountability or the men just need to level up. But married households and household formation are better citizens. They vote. They save at twice the rate. They're less likely to commit crimes. And we have fewer and fewer uh, viable men. We have a dearth of economically and emotionally uh, viable men. But the middle class is an accident. Unless you invest in it, it doesn't happen. Eisenhower decided to invest $500 billion in a national highway uh, project that created tons of jobs. We have, uh, and by the way, the tax rate back then was 91%. We raised money and we redistributed in social programs that made young people more economically viable. Okay, wow. BK. Yeah, great point. Wow, I, so, I love the point you made, man. Wow. So would you say that, so that's what a lot of women actually say. They actually say, oh, stop complaining or stop trying to travel to these countries. That's what I was getting as a response with yep. my TikToks, yeah? They say, why don't you just make more money? Sure. Why don't you just... He just said, level up, level up. That's what level you know. up. Level up. So what do you say to that? It's a great point. It's, 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 and there's, there's two ways of addressing this because interestingly enough, I'm hearing it, I'm kind of smiling because I'm like, I, I tell myself that. And I'm like, is that a subconscious thing or is that coming from society? Because as a man, you're always being told to aspire to be better in some way, shape or form. No matter how much money you got, how great your physique is, where you live, what car you drive, you're always pushing for more. So I'm like, is that a subconscious thing or is it because there's always this societal pressure? So that's the first thing I'm thinking. But to answer your question, Lightbringer, yeah, oh, why are you going there? Why not just improve? Why not just make more money? Because it's that easy, really. The people actually understand the time we're living in economically, because I think you and I do. We look at things from an economic perspective and we understand why, and they do it obviously even better than we can, but dating is linked to the economic time you're living in. Like he said, men return from the war, subsidized housing, right? Uh, gainful employment, things that would make them, as I mentioned just before we went into that stream again, these are things that make you more desirable in the market. It's not rocket science, right? So they could say that, but the interesting thing is, he talks about this as well. And I mentioned it would be in fair and balanced 
the men have to do better, right? The men have to become more viable. But is, as I said earlier, is the woman waiting for you when you become more viable? When you get the money, when you get that career, when you crack that figure, right? Whatever it is, high five, six figures. Is the woman there for you? Is the wife there for you? Is it? Because if it ain't, and you do all these things, right? Like a lot of men do, they buy the book, came out of school, got the degree, got the job, got this, got that. If the woman isn't waiting for you, you're going to return back to where that, where, you, where that, where that, all those statistics were on the cycle. Depressed, misogynistic, angry, disgruntled, alone, all the things. Because you'll have all the stuff that you're told, as I mentioned earlier, you're supposed to have, but you still won't be getting your ROI. So mm -hmm. he mentions it. Yeah, there's a dearth of men and stuff, but there's also a dearth of quality, which you said in the last period we just spoke about. Like, there isn't the quality there for the men that even make it to the upper echelon, so to speak. Yeah, perfectly said. And it always boils down to that. It's like, okay, there isn't enough slim women to go around. Yeah. We, call it slim, slim. we can go, we can go deeper. It's quality across the board. Quality, yeah. I mean, yeah, let me let me not put my bias into it because I might have an affinity for slim, but yeah, there's obviously different types. But like fit is a better word because I sure. think fit, fit is important. Like it's important to be fit. And um, we could go with the OG Kevin. So Kevin yeah. said fit, feminine, and friendly. Yeah. I agree. I think those are the three most important if you think about it. Just universally. We've all got a little, like you yeah. say here. Oh, I like, but generally speaking. Fit, feminine, friendly works because those are three hallmarks a good quality woman tends to be. She's healthy, fit, lives a healthy lifestyle. She's feminine. What man doesn't like a frail, graceful, elegant woman? Most men aren't trying to date a masculine woman who's angry or got a bad attitude or wants to behave like a man, get a temper and stuff. And friendly. You want a friendly woman to come home to. Life can be hard. You're running a business. You've got a, a seriously stressful and demanding career. You want a friendly woman who you come to the door and she's like, she brings you a certain peace, alleviates a lot of those stresses. So those, those three tend to make the most sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would say to be fair and balanced, men are ultimately looking for fit, feminine, friendly women. And that's decreased since the 1960s and 70s. Yeah. Women are looking for men that, as he said, the middle class was a huge thing back then. It emerged. America was prosperous. And a middle class man in the 19... Uh-oh. Oh, hang on. We're back out again. Hold on. Let's just do it. I'll try and get that fixed for the next one. My camera times out. So, for, 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 for women, they want a... Let's call it a middle class man. Yeah. They want more than that now because their desires have increased uh, substantially. Yeah. But let's yeah. just say, for argument's sake, women want a middle class man that can effectively work as they did in the 60s and 70s and pay all the bills yeah, and and pay and get a nice house with a picket fence. That's no longer possible now in 2023 to be a, you know, a 45,000 pound earner and provide that. You can't, the, the market doesn't bear that anymore. You, you will probably get a studio apartment yeah. for, for the same, um, my, you know, equivalent money back in the day. So right. both parties are not being met. No. No, no, no parties are not being met. So no being met. it's very simple, you know, and I'm trying to be balanced with it to, to understand where women are coming from. It's very simple. Like if those um, things are not being met, it, it's the juice doesn't become worth the squeeze. Yeah. And also I want to touch upon a point. Really attractive women, so women that are eights and nines and tens, being in a relationship for them, it's almost, uh, it's like a, there's a there's no benefit for them to be in a relationship anymore because the the profit and the 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 the, the monetization that is possible for them being a single woman being playing the field dealing with high net worth guys being a jumper for this NBA player dealing with this entrepreneur etc et that is more profitable now than being in a relationship which is why there's so many women that choose to opt into this quote unquote city girl lifestyle fast lifestyle it is a culture it yeah. is and it's we came from america and yeah. english women have picked up on it english women have definitely picked up on it and there's even a video that i want to play but we'll, we'll leave that to the end about yeah. how english culture is is, is 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 just shaping around the u.s yeah yeah there's no value in exclusivity there's the same virtue that yeah. there was once in being exclusive belonging to somebody being proud to be a wife, uh, a homemaker, 
a mother. It's still there a little bit, but in pockets. But the city girl lifestyle, as you called it, is actually more desirable um, amongst women. And we're generalizing here, right? We can't say everyone, but it would appear by and large as it's pushed in the mass media, social media, that, and women of all ages, let's keep in mind, this ain't just the youngest and the most beautiful women, as you mentioned. There's women in their 30s and 40s who want to live this lifestyle. And they promote it as if it's the peak lifestyle. And that's something we should also talk about because I know for a fact, we've got older women who are single, angry, bitter, divorced, right? Some who are just, you know, just single. Who but they younger women that, hey, don't get married, don't settle down, be like me. This is the optimal way to live. Don't bother. Those 30 and 40 year olds, um, they're not really in the game like that. So what I'm saying is the eights and nines that are 20 to 27. So those are the prime years where yeah. you'd want to marry a woman. Yeah. yeah. They're pushing, those... My point is they're pushing it on younger, like well-to-do, attractive women. Hey, don't bother wasting your good years getting married or having children. You probably have heard this. Like we've got older women and I feel like it is come of it. I mentioned it. I think some of it is coming from a place of bitterness. Like, hey, but don't wait, wait, wait. Go. Sorry to cut you off. No, but no an attractive, a uh, dime piece woman. So, a woman yeah. that's a seven, eight, or nine out of ten, she's not going to listen to what the forty-year-old auntie says, or not necessarily blood auntie. They're not going to listen because the offers on the table, it's almost in secret. It's mm. almost in secret. It's almost like so a regular woman would probably more maybe have she doesn't have the leverage in the society a regular six out of ten that's 24 years old she doesn't have the real leverage but the eights and nines the yeah. offers that they're getting under the table they cannot refuse them because they're broke first of all they're broke yeah they're gorgeous they want a genetic lottery lottery yeah. and it's the case of well there's a guy that's in my DMs and he keeps messaging me because he wants to take me to the Maldives he wants right. to take me to Dubai yeah. he wants to take me to the south of France yeah, yeah? like there's no way a woman is going to say, let me listen to my auntie who, yeah. is, who is working in an office for Newham Council talking about what to do. And she's 24. She's never listening to that, to that, exactly. to That's that the woman. That's the making light bring up. It's a dime. It. Yeah, but this, you're making a great point. The, you, to be, vir I've said this to you, off, I think, off camera, and maybe I'm paraphrasing my own words. To be virtuous in 2023, or maybe I said it in our first stream, to be virtuous in 2023, you actually have to go against the grain as a woman. That's why I don't blame them because the question really is, what would it take for a, a super beautiful, let's say desired woman, universally desired to say, I'm not gonna choose that lifestyle and I'm gonna choose that I'll keep my virtue and I want to be with a good man and build a strong family or just have a partner instead of like running the city girl game, so to speak. And I'm using the PC term because we could dive into what that is. But to choose that over, well, why not just, leverage the God-given beauty I've got. So many guys want me. So many guys are willing to give me a lifestyle. You are having to essentially go against the current trend because that's what the current trend is for a young, as you mentioned, beautiful seven, eight, nine, whatever you want to call it, woman. Yeah. And it's easy to be virtuous if you're a four, five, or six. Exactly. No, woman, it just is. It just is. Well, you don't have the option. So it's easy to say, well, look at me. I'm in church. I yeah. do art class. I'm just looking for a good man. It's like, yeah, but that's all the that's all the market bears because the most beautiful women aren't even on the apps. Yeah, yeah. The seven, eight, or nines, the, the offers that they're getting, because people think, and this is another thing, because because this is why I like this guy that's in the video we're watching, because he's a business guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's literally he, he's a school of business uh, professor. Yeah. I'm a business guy. And we look at the markets and we look at the numbers. Yeah. And if you're a five out of ten, yeah, female. And you're a six out of ten female. People think there's only one point differential in 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 um in um life lifestyle outcome. It's not one; it multiplies. It's exponential. If you're a female seven and you're a female eight, it's the it's exponential in terms of. So do you understand? So like, if you're a female seven, it's like okay, you're you're attractive, blah blah blah. But if you're a female eight, it's exponential because you get into the class where celebrity. Guys mm. want to message you. Mm. Whereas it's the difference between being a seven might be a jump off for a celebrity Got and you. an eight might actually be able to be a a kept woman of a celebrity. It's a great reward of what you're saying. There's a great Say reward. The greater reward is what you're saying. Yeah, like as you jump, as a woman goes, I mean, women don't go from five, six, or seven, but 
if we look at the outcomes of a five, a six, and a seven, and an eight, it's not just a simple step ladder. It's exponential. It's yeah. like an exponential oh, chart. Be great. It's like that. Yeah. Like, if you're a female nine, listen, if you're a female nine in the West, in the UK or the US, I know some female nines. These are, because I don't give tens. Some of the nines, they do St. Martin's every Christmas. They mm. do 15 to 18 trips a year. Um, designer shopping all the time because they're kept women. Right. But a lifestyle of a six is not like that. She'll get, right. she'll, she'll, she'll go to a restaurant here or there. The guy will take her out. She will, um, she might buy a couple of designer pieces, get a couple of gifts, blah, blah, blah. She takes pictures at certain restaurants. It ain't the same. Yeah. So how can you ask again, the question? So let's ask the question for when people watch this back and you guys, please, we want, we want interaction with this. How can you ask a woman that's living this lifestyle, St. Martin's at Christmas, right? Kept woman. Uh, she's on retainer, getting paid exorbitant amounts of money, uh, basically an income every month, right? To take that lifestyle and forgo it yeah. in order to be an everyday, hardworking, sort of the earth man. It's never happening. It's never happening. And that's the, exactly, that's the point I was trying to make. It's, it's that, what's the word I'm looking for? Capitalism has become so efficient. The people at the top, as Andrew Tate always points out, they are monetizing everything. Sorry, they are monopolizing everything. Yep. So, yep. That, that as as the example has been said, that girl from like Colchester. Perfect example: Simeon Panda. His girl's from Colchester. Bam! <laughs> just took, just took, just, just took, took. You know what I mean? To the top. So it's important. It is important. For guys to really be the best versions of themselves, yeah, yeah. But for for what reason though? Because we've just highlighted what the top end of the market is. So if you are again, for those who are going to watch this, if you do consider yourself top end of the market, or let's just say you're a hardworking guy who's willing to put in the work, you know, because we all know men have to earn their worth, and women are kind of born with it. And I'm paraphrasing, but we've all heard that kind of example, right? Mm -hmm. And that analogy. If you're shooting for the top, hey, I'm going to get here. I'm going to get into this type of shape. I'm going to make this type of money. I'm going to develop this type of network and develop myself as a man. If you're shooting for the top, like I said, you may still not get it. You may still not get it just because of the way the market is set up. It's not you. It's not personal. It's the market, you know, and women get to choose at the end of the day. So whatever you're doing just may not be enough. So like you said, and I, I as a coach, I stand by that. I wouldn't be much of a brother's keeper if I didn't say, yes, you should be working on being the best version of yourself. But when you become that best version of yourself, the brother's keeper's advice is you take that value overseas. You take it somewhere where you can maximize that value because yeah. you will be able to maximize that value. If here in the UK or in America or other parts of the conceptual West, that best version of you is only considered average still, it is a shake in these foreign countries. Yep, there you go. I love that. I love that. I love that, and that, and that's kind of what I've been on for the last seven years. It's, it's it doesn't make sense to really because it's in, inputs and outputs. You don't want to be doing all of this. You don't want to be looking like a mini AJ, which is like you know peak physical fitness. You don't want to be building up your career to first of all at the end get 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 screwed over by the system. Because mm -hmm. you don't, you, you know, we've always got that that side of thing as well. But then also, you just you want to be able to, to 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 have a plethora of dating options. And I'm telling you, the dating options, it, like I'm a DR fan, the dating options in the Dominican Republic are insane. Yeah, yeah. they're absolutely insane. And my TikTok video, which hit what three, I think it hit two hundred and twenty thousand views. Yeah, it it shook up the the TikTok uh, world for a little bit. Because I was showcasing that. And brothers yeah. need to see that. Brothers need to understand. We are talking to guys in their mid-30s that have lived a little. We understand again. We're not too old where we, we're so detached from what's going on. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, we're like, I mean, I've made it clear what my dating age range is. I'm tapping into the 22 and 23 and 24-year-olds. Right. And also, Lightbringer, you're making a great point. But touch upon why a man, going back to the mental health and everything they talked about, why is it so important for a man to have a plethora of options? Talk about what that does for a man's self-esteem, his ego, his pride. 
because that is part of mental health. And this is something that doesn't get covered enough when we get called sex tourists and the rest of it. Talk about what having options does to a man's well-being. Yeah. So a man, anything in life, if you're in a scarcity mindset, yeah, you're going to make poor decisions. It's like if, you're, if, if you have a scarcity of income, you will be willing, you'll be willing to accept any job, which is honourable, but you get the analogy I'm trying to make. You will accept anything. Your the next employee might tell you you've got to come in at this time and you've got to leave 13 hours later. And if you're late two times, you're getting this. You'll accept anything. Yeah. You need it's and a lot of men that are from the UK, because I know the UK obviously as a Brit extremely well. I know your 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 plight. You are in a situation where you you're a second class citizen. Not exactly. only it's not a black country. So first of all, you're looked at as in, in a certain way. The right. rules regulations are not set up for you. So there's that. Um, you live in a it's a it's a gynocentric. What, what's the saying? A gynocentric. It's gynocentric. It's a women's first society. It's a, it's a women's what? first society. You yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to put you you want to be strategic. It's never been more important. It wasn't 15 years ago. It wasn't even that important to be this strategic. It really was not that serious 15 years yeah. ago. You could just, you could just, um, breeze through life. you just breeze through life and you could just make up as you went along because it wasn't that serious. Now you're at a point where there's men in the UK that are, that are basically being put on YouTube. Sorry, not YouTube. They're being put on TikTok because they're looking at women or they're approaching women. And they're, these women are now taking TikToks of these videos and making these guys go viral and saying, hey, look at this little. They're just doing the stuff that I was doing 15 years ago. Just want to yeah. chat to a woman. That's a great men, basically. And that's a part of this agenda as well. So yeah. what you're saying, just to chime in really quickly, I love because this is the truth. Like, it's about, it's never been more important to be strategic. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with using the brain God gave you. Using your masculinity yeah. to, like, yeah. figure it out. The way I look at it, to use an analogy as well, is once upon a time, like men were in wars, right? You were stuck in a fucking hole and you had to figure out how to use your wits, right? Mm. And your masculinity to survive. And if you didn't, mm. you wouldn't survive. If mm. you let the inner bitch or, do you know what I mean? The, the fears and the doubts, then you're dead. That's mm. what this is. This data marketplace has become, this shit has become a war, man. Like, and everyone can see it. And if you don't think strategically, you're not going to win. You're not going to eat, you're not going to live. You're going to die. And that's, that's what's going to happen. Being a martyr, is not going to help you. Don't don't try and save anyone but yourself because like you just said, Lightbringer, then no one's coming to save you. If we just told you, and you guys probably know this when you watch this back, that this is a, a women's first gynocentric society. If that's the case, then yes, you are a second class citizen. But not only are you a second class citizen, here's the here's the punchline. Nobody cares about you. You, you are an afterthought. Mm -hmm. Everything else comes before you. You are the last person to get saved. That's, mm -hmm. that's of it and if that's the case what, what's going to be left behind for you scraps which we established earlier is all yeah. really offering you so if you want more than scraps you are going to have to think strategically and i yeah. say this with like emphasis because i feel like a lot of guys and i've been there myself where you feel guilt for using your leverage or your 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 value in in this way it, they can make you again the, the, the psyop is they can make you feel grubby about it but what is the alternative yeah, they they don't have the uh, need to be strategic. When I say they, I'm talking about black women yeah. in the in the West. They don't have the need to because if you look at the balance of power, women always have a chair yeah. in the sexual market. They always have a chair. Men, the way women are hypergamous, which okay, understandable, we get it. Yeah, there is out of every ten chairs, um, four chairs. If there's 10 chairs for women, 10 chairs for men, the bottom four chairs, you don't have a chair. So there's yeah. only six chairs for men. There's even less than that, to be honest. There's like four chairs for men and 10 chairs for women. And the six guys that don't have a chair, you're out of the game. It's a zero-sum game. It's different. Zero men have a... a, 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 a I'm not going to say it's a need, but a, a strong desire for sexual relations with women. Yeah? yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're you know we're anima we're animals at the base point yeah? Yeah, yeah and if women will sleep with the top guy and just walk right over the guy oh, who's yeah. on that level 
She'll walk right over him. It's like, I don't care. The, the guy, we, men and women are, you know, innately different. Yeah. The guy will, will, will sleep different women, blah, blah, blah. We get it. So he will spread himself around. Women don't obviously like this. They don't see it the way it is. I no, get that. They're looking for there was a difference. They're looking for security. You just mentioned it. The reason why those men are desired is because they provide security. They provide uh, a certain leverage. And I can respect that because we touched upon it earlier. Once you lose that value over time with age, right, it's, it's a problem. So they should be selective, right? But we get to be selective as well with our value because you're building all this value, right? You're building your, your station in life, your career, your finances, et cetera. You've now got to decide how you're going to use that value. Are you going to take that value and put it back in a market where you're going to get a lower ROI? Or are you going to put it back in a market where you're going to get a higher ROI? I like that. I, 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 like, I like the way you put that. Because that's how men need to see their... In, it's an investment. It is. It's an investment when it comes to these relationships and dating. And, you know, you're going to pay at the front end or you're going to pay at the back end. And if we, we, we know that the best, we, you know, I want guys to win. I want guys to date attractive women. I want guys to date women that are fit. Mm. And if in the West, fit women, they like to be taken to nice restaurants, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah. So if Never that's the change, you're, you're going to have to spend some money. So I'm telling you, men, to be strategic yeah. and go to a country where a fancy restaurant is going to not only, and it's not even just the raw cost. That's that's one element. The women are going to just be you, you know you have higher you have high leverage in the dating market. You are uh, as you said uh, uh, effectively rich in the country, and you, you you can kind of date from from higher up on the tree. Yes. It's, it's complete logical sense to me. And everyone, sense. By the way, everybody wins in that situation. Nobody's being leveraged or stepped on or taken advantage of or utilized. You are simply using your worth, plugging it into another market. Right. Because women are women. There's no utopia. Like you just said, whether she's foreign or she's Western, everybody wants to be treated with respect. But also every woman wants to be, for lack of a better term, tricked out on. We've both dated foreign and domestically. So we can speak on that. They all love experiences. If you plug your worth into another market and you're still given a good experience, then ultimately, if it's at a, a, a lower cost, so to speak, right, this investment. Well, it's a lower cost to you, but it's not a lower cost to her. So now she's got a top tier experience. You you aren't as out of pocket, right? And there's more reciprocal um, return on the investment. So it's a win-win. Everybody's winning. It's not a case of the amount of time it takes to stack said money or the disadvantage you might be at in the West when you're, when you're dating and you're going on expensive dates, which by and large, most of Western dating, by the way, statistically is expensive for everybody. It doesn't matter how much money you've got just because the cost of things simply is higher in the conceptual West. So dating abroad actually just financially makes way more sense if the goal is to date or find a partner. No one can even just like debate that at this point. If you're going to non-first world Anglospheric countries, 100% it's going to cost you significantly less. Perfect. Exactly, exactly. Let me pl let's play this, uh, this guy out. Yeah, let's play this guy out. And then, Scott, you toss in the influence of social media and how relationships today, they don't come from, in our era, happenstance and mingling, right? They, they come from swiping, and that further accelerates this issue. Am I right? Oh, it's it's been the chaser to it. I mean, to have to have an honest conversation about this, we have to be honest. And that is that men and women have different mating criteria. One quarter of women, excuse me, one quarter of men saying economic viability is a key criteria in a mate. Three quarters of women say that is important. And when you're on a two dimensional format where now it's one and two relationships begin online, it used to be one and four just a few years ago. It gets distilled down to a small number of criteria specifically for men it's does she look attractive and specifically for men is he, is he able to signal his ability to garner resources in the future an average attractive male on tinder gets swiped less than one percent of the time and there's three men on tinder for every one woman so you've distilled it you've taken out one of the key components of mating dynamics and that is vibe humor body language, pheromones, the ability to be, quite frankly, a little bit persistent in the pursuit of mm -hmm. a romantic relationship. We have no third 
places anymore, no places to meet. People aren't going to bars, they aren't sports league, they aren't going to church, they aren't even going to work. So it gets distilled down to very one or two dimensional attributes. And the reality is women are much choosier than men and they can apply those screens and they allocate all of their attention to a small number of men that results in just essentially at the end of the day, a lack of opportunities. Chris Williamson, Chris Williams uh, summarized it perfectly, called it the high heels effect. In the last 40 years, more women have graduated from college than men, and they're not interested in mating with non-college grads. They now own more homes, single women than single men. So what you have is women say they won't date anyone shorter than them, 50% of them. Effectively, what you have metaphorically over the last 40 years is women have been getting taller and taller, and men have been getting shorter and shorter. How many of us have said, I know a ton of great single women, they can't find a date? That's not true. They can't find a date. They can't find a man they find economically or emotionally viable. If we don't make a massive investment in young people and make more economically and emotionally viable men, we're going to see a lack of household formation. We're going to see a decline in the middle class. And we're going to see, quite frankly, just a lot of young men who are terrible citizens. So mm. is the answer to fix this economically and who will champion this conversation? You, you felt obliged to compliment me at the outset because we had engaged on this a year ago and here I am revisiting it. And I read into that the fact that you think that it's politically incorrect even to have this dialogue. When you're seen as advocating for men because of the 300,000 year head start we've had, it seems somehow as anti-female. There's a lot of very unfortunate misogyny online that is masquerading as being pro-men. A lot of TikTok celebrities who talk about advocating for men, it's just thinly veiled misogyny. What do we need? We need more freshman seats in colleges. We need a massive investment in vocational training. We need to figure out a way to get more permitting for housing so young people can afford housing. We need to recognize our economic policies, literally allocate wealth from young people to old people. The percentage of wealth that young people control under the age of 40 has been cut from 12% to 6%. What do you say to that, my friend? Wow, that was really, yeah, he, he really hits it, doesn't he? Like, I, I love where he takes the issue. Like, they're gonna end up being terrible citizens, he said. Like, that bit really was like, oof. And that's a fair point, man. Again, a, a man that's not well-rounded. And he said, what did he say? Emotionally and um, a, a, a financially, I think, if I'm not mistaken, viable men. Like, it's the development. Because, again, me having a bit of a background in sort of men's work and personal development, that definitely hits home because you see that a lot as well. It's like you need to, you need to develop yourself as, um, as a person, right? And, and, and if you can't do that, yeah, obviously, on top of the finance, we know the resource thing is a big thing. But if you can't develop yourself as a person – you are definitely going to be not just frozen out of the marketplace, you're frozen out of society is, I guess, what he was saying. And that is a very real um, situation for a lot of men, the way the way this current trend is going. I mean, again, he was also talking about kind of just how women choose and how men choose and we how different that is and how that's affected it. I, I completely agree. But one thing he did say that I wanted to touch upon really quickly was that he's sort of foreshadowing it like it's going to be like that. No, no, no. It's already here. It is, it's here. If it wasn't here, the passport movement, which we so championed, wouldn't be a thing. It's here. This issue is now. It's not, oh, you know, the way it's, it's, this is happening now. These men are like this now. They're frozen out now. These women are only choosing the top. He said it, the 1% of the most attractive men. I've said that before on your previous stream. Like, they're not even getting chosen. This issue is here now. Question is, what are people going to do to take action now? to not remedy it, because I don't think it could be remedied, but remedy it for your own life. How are you going to, as I said earlier, how are you going to take action so that you can still get a result or a victory out of all this? Because this is not going to change anytime soon. Um, for whatever reason, you can argue whether women like it, they like having control, whatever it is, it's not going to change. And mm -hmm. the only way you can make it work for you is by looking at some solutions. Because as he said, the top percent of man isn't even being chosen, isn't even being helped to develop by governments and systems and all the rest of it. Like even what we're doing, this is a form of personal development and self-development, but we've had to do this ourselves. Nobody came in to tell us, hey, man, you need to go get a passport if you're disgruntled. We had to figure that shit out. Do you see what I'm saying? We had to look at the market and let's be real, get burnt a few times by it, as have many other men. So that's the way we've had to learn and develop ourselves. There was no one coming in to, to steady the ship and tell you, hey, man, 
if you're looking for a great woman, it's like I, I had to use my common sense and look at what the market was giving me to realize, oh, hang on, I've got to start redirecting my energy elsewhere. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I think. I think it's a case of it just echoes what we've been saying. He, he's looking at it from a statistical form. I'm looking at it from an action taking form. That trend, those statistics are going to increase. If they're alarming now to all watching, they're going to be more alarming in the next five to 10 years. Best believe that. Mm. So that, that leads to my next point because we're gonna we're gonna um, wrap up very soon, very shortly. Where do you see prediction times? Where do you see black women, specifically black women, yeah, in the next ten years? I want to talk about okay, like what's their weight gonna be like? Yeah, their weight, their physical weight. What's their their outlook going to be in terms of their dating situation? Because by that time, the passport bro movement will be matured. Um, so make a prediction for 10 years. So 2033, where do you see black women in the UK and the US um, 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 being? All right. Well, honestly, and this is why I'm not laughing. You can see I've got my serious face on. It's an end of day situation is what it is. When this passport thing continues to grow, it's going to have a direct impact as it already is in America. But UK will, will catch up as will Canada and Australia, our parts of the conceptual West. It's going to make a serious dent in the black community um, to the point where uh, if things are bad now, as far as there being a lack of viable options, as he mentioned, there's going to be even less options, obviously, if more men decide to start activating the passport power, I call it. Uh, for black women specifically, those who are overweight, those who are considered less desirable, they're going to be in serious trouble as far as, far as finding potential suitors in the in the black community, finding upwardly mobile, good, solid, dependable men, because I just don't think the market will produce those men who are willing to stay and no offense to deal with them. I, I, I think those men will will figure out logically they can get the same, if not a better ROI on a black woman abroad. So mm -hmm. I would look at it from a perspective of there will probably be a rise in the amount of single black women in the UK and America, obviously. Um, and they will either be, as, as we adapted, they'll either be forced to look at other races of men, because, you know, by and large, I'm generalizing, but you don't find a lot of black women tend to want to date outside their race, but that will become a much more, I think, viable option as the, the number of like viable black men decreases. And I think there'll be that. And there'll, there'll be a combination of things. There'll be a mix of that. And there'll just be a mix of just, unfortunately, sadly, a lot of black women just deciding to be alone, have dogs, have cats, you know, pets provide women comfort. We know a lot of women, you know, they like to have pets, but I think we lost you there, Lightbringer. Yeah, I'm coming back in. I'm coming back. Yeah, I think a lot of I think a lot of women like pets anyway, but I think a lot of them <laughs> I'm not making a joke here. This is a real thing. I, I I've had a girlfriend before who was very, you know, her pet oh, was a family member. We know that people in general do. That there's going to be a lot of women um with pets. That's true. true. Who's you know what? Forget it. I might go on a date once in a while, but having a boyfriend, I, I'll live alone. It, that's a very, that, that's one of the things that is already happening. I'm not making jokes here. So I, I, see, I see a lot of that. I think there's going to be a lot more. You'll probably, that's, that's the sign to probably look for if anyone watching. When you start to see a black woman at a certain age with a dog or a cat, you'll probably be able to like make that assumption that, oh, you know, there's no, there's no man in the picture. And, and that's not me making a joke. This, this is going to be evident. Yeah. If you're talking 10 years, right, we're looking into the future. I'm not a, I've got a crystal ball here, but if, if I had to create the brother's keeper's ball here, that would be where I see it going because mm -hmm. the passport movement provides so many solutions for men. I won't get into them all now because we're wrapping up, but it, the, the solutions go beyond dating. Like I mentioned, mm -hmm. it, it's a mental health solution. It's, it's a self-worth solution. It's a, it's a brotherhood solution. It, it's a, it's a treatment solution. It's a lifestyle solution. People just don't see that because they're only seeing the, the things that are being baited right now on social media, and we will eventually, like you say, mature. That's the right word. And it will migrate towards where it is kind of going, I think, a bit, which is lifestyle. It's a lifestyle solution, you mm -hmm. know. And lifestyle for men is everything. As a man, I can speak on that, right? We know peace of mind, joy, happiness. Everyone is looking for those things. But if you can get that with this, you're not gonna you're not gonna go any other way. You're not gonna have the the, the sympathy people will expect you to have. Oh, but what about no? Sorry, that's not my problem. That that's how those conversations will go. <laughs> it won't be a oh, but you should know. 
no, I shouldn't. I mean, you just be cutting conversations off. Like mm-hmm. I'm already out. I'm, I mean, again, we've got men older than us who have this type of attitude towards it. If we're now the, 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 the bearers of like trying to usher in what happens next. And we're saying this, what do you think a guy who's let's no disrespect here, but a guy who's in his teens and his early twenties, who's never actually had a, the taste of, a, of dating an attractive woman, because obviously that's not light bringer in myself. That guy is going to have even less sympathy for the situation. He's going to be like, yeah, how do I do this? How do I, how do I, how do I, how do I, how do I he's hard? starving. That brother's starving. He's, he's famished. That's the word. He's famished. He's going to be like, yo, forget, forget this. How do I, and because people are very self-absorbed, everyone's selfish to some extent. So there won't be this, you know, the generation before with Kevin Samuels and that, this this race loyal, that's going. That's, that's already at the door. We're already at loggerheads. So the opportunity, as you mentioned earlier, when it presents itself, there will be no looking back. The floodgates will open because Pandora's box has already been opened, but the floodgates will open when it becomes a much more viable option as far as remote work, infrastructure, there's brotherhoods abroad, there's communities, there's tours that can introduce you to how you can get set up. You're out of there. You, you're not going to be like, oh, but you know, there might be a no. There, there, there won't be any of that. There's no comparison. That's the way I see it. I think the only thing that does hold that will hold men back is the economic reason, and that's that's that, that's women better kind of like hope that that stays the same because it, I mean it is likely to stay the same because yeah. the oh, average wow. salary the average salary is not going to drastically increase yeah. to huge amounts, and even if it did, it would also you could argue the point that men would say oh well i make i'm earning a big amount now let me go and stay in the states and try and do the family thing so it can go both ways with that but i think the marketing job that the um passport bros are doing over these last few years has been immense it's going to grow and grow and you're going to see a cultural shift yeah and it's, it's going to be it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be epic to watch and observe and see this play out and unfortunately, black women are not going to come to the table with sincere intentions and like a sincere um, way of kind of finding a resolution to the to the issue. They are going to be as stubborn as ever. Yep. They are they they're going to belittle the whole thing. Oh, oh you're weak. You're, down, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're gay. You're this. You're that. Excuses. Yep. Blah, blah blah. Rather than looking within and saying, "Okay, what can I do to compete?" And that's the main, the main, the main difference. Like w- women, black women, unfortunately, it doesn't feel like they compete no. for, for men at all. They don't compete. It's kind of, you got to lay all your cards out, and you got to compete for me. And yeah. brothers, are, brothers have had enough. They're gonna so, double yeah. down. They're gonna double down. I think you're right. They're I have to double down. In. They're gonna double down, and unfortunately, them doubling down, it will only really like. <laughs> Like validate, validate them. You know what I'm it doesn't. They they kind of go hand in hand. They'll yeah, go yeah, yeah, yeah. And be like, well, you see now, you see why this is what you see a lot already. Oh, this, this is why it almost just validates it. So yeah, you're right. It's not going to create any kind of like, oh no, you know. I mean, I've seen a little bit of that, but nowhere near enough to no, like. Not, to not enough. Really. Not not enough to like really take the black sort of family and and community as a whole because community means being together, right? It's not going to take the situation out of disarray. It's it's just going to make it more, probably going to make it more combative actually towards each other. The ones that yeah, are still yeah. the men that are still here, the, men, the women that are still in the conceptual west, are probably going to be even more at each other's throats. I imagine. Yeah, I think it's going to create more volatility, more conversation, more arguing, debate, conflict. It, it, it's going to, you know, I can see this being a really ongoing conversation, and I'm glad to just be in the space mm. and watch this and just be part of it, really, because. It is going to be shifting over culture, really. Um, yeah, I think I think we've kind of summed up everything that I want to sum up. You know, uh, if there's anything else you want to mention, feel free. Um, anything else? Yeah, I, my final thought on this will just be kind of what I, I feel like I've I've tried to just uh, highlight throughout this whole stream, which is that unfortunately, and this is just my opinion, of course. I think when you look at relationships and dating, you do have to think with a very selfish attitude. I never used to, but the kind of climate we're in now, and that's the word I want to use. This is a climate we're in. You have to, you have to be self-interested because you have to understand as a man, and most men are smart enough to know this, nobody's coming to save you and nobody's coming to steady the ship for your life. No one cares enough, no offense, 
literally no one. And once you actually accept that, right, it's like that expression, the greatest day of your life is when you realize no one's coming to save you. Now you can do something about it. All we're doing here, we're not slating anybody, is we're giving you some statistics, some ideas, some trends, but we're giving you a solution that you can choose to take or not. Yeah. You, don't like it, you don't have to do this. This is not for everybody. That's, let's just say that, actually, Lightbring. That's one thing we haven't said in the two streams so far. This passport thing, this doesn't work for everybody. This works for a certain type of man, in my opinion. We've got friends that are doing this who are executing on this, by the way, and are doing this successfully abroad as we speak. But it's not going to work for everybody. Not everybody has the... I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, Lightbringer. Like the, the, the gusto to, to pull this off. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It takes a certain amount of work. That's true. Courage. Like this is, it's a certain risk. It's a calculated risk. But yep. As a man, I mean, in life, you're not going to get anywhere if you're not taking some sort of a risk as a man. At least yep. the ones I know that I respect. So this ain't going to work for everybody. But all we're doing is providing a solution. But as I said, my point as I wrap up is when it comes to dating and relationships as a whole, whether you choose to stay in the West or not, you need to think with self-interest. You need to. Whether you get married, whether you date, whether you go abroad, think with self-interest. I, I, I tweeted this out the other day, or threaded this out, I guess you could call it now. The woman that you choose to be with is an investment. Regardless of who she is, she is an investment. You need to calculate on the woman that you choose to be with. All women, if that's your proclivity, the ROI. You need to calculate the ROI. Beforehand, during, after. Always, you said it earlier, start looking at them as an investment. They're human beings. They're lovely, graceful, elegant, ethereal creatures, but they are an investment of your money, energy, attention, and time. Meat, as they call it. Start looking at it that way, and then you will start to find solutions like the one we found. And then from there, now, you know, you can move and shape the way you want to. Yep, yeah, I've perfectly uh, summarized. Uh, so guys, please like, subscribe the video. Subscribe to the channel, uh, share if you feel like you've gained some value from this. They might be a guy that's maybe going through a breakup, a sad time, sad situation right now. Just show him, look, man, there's some guys that are doing it out there in um, Latin America, back and forth. And we're going to show you uh, the way. Also, guys, tune in. Yeah, we're going to do a passport talk extra. Yeah, I'm going to add it in as a segment after this show. So tune in. Yeah, and if you've tuned in it'll be a treat for those that have watched the show to its entirety so i think that's it You're, this is the light bringer i'm with the brothers keeper please like and subscribe both our channels we've both got different channels yep. and guys that's it thanks for watching peace let me end the recording